Have you ever wanted to time travel? The closest I have ever come is picking up a historical newspaper and reading the headlines from the past. These little time capsules offer so much information on what life was like, thanks to some amazing digitization projects at the University of Oregon and the Library of Congress. It is now easier than ever to research historic newspapers. Today, we're gonna to introduce you to two free online newspaper databases. The University of Oregon's Historic Oregon Newspaper Database, which contains a wide variety of newspapers from the state of Oregon. And the Library of Congress's Chronicling America Database, which contains newspapers from all over the United States. Let's start out with a research question. One question I get quite frequently talking to folks researching their family history is, what can you tell me about my relative's life? They've got the facts. They know that this is Louise Tietze. She was born in Germany in 1868, died in Oregon in 1954, and married R.L. Penton in March of 1892. But what was her life really like? Newspaper research can add some more flesh to those bare bone vital statistics. Let's see what we can find out about Louise. The Historic Oregon Newspapers database is really easy to use. We'll start with our search term, Louise Tietze, right here in the search newspaper pages. Hit go. And unfortunately, no matches found. You're gonna get this a lot. Don't despair, get creative. Uh, some of the easiest ways to find good information are to simplify your search. So instead of putting Louise's total name in, we'll just put her last name, Tietze, in. When we do that, we find we have over 13 pages of results. Now this might not answer the exact questions I have immediately, but it might help provide some background information. So we can scroll down and see the different pages where the name Tietze comes up in the state and mail. You'll notice the red highlighted areas are the areas where um, the keyword is found on the page. So if we want to look and see more about that, we'll just click on the page there, scroll down, and can utilize the plus and minus buttons to make it bigger or smaller. So we'll take a look at what they have to say about the Tietze family here. So in the Mahama Mites, talking about Mahama, Oregon, Mr. Frank Tietze made a business trip to Salem Friday. Oh, good old historic newspapers up in everybody's business. We can scroll down and see more information about Frank. Frank's been working with his brother Julius on helping build a new barn. Adolf had a pretty serious headache last week, but he's doing better now. And Julius's family went to Staten on Saturday. Interesting information, um, but maybe not exactly what we we're looking for. So let's go back and see if we can find another creative way to look for information. We might decide to go in and use the advanced search function, which I can get to by clicking here under advanced search. Since I know that Louise married a man named Penton, maybe I'll try searching for their names together on the same page, both surnames together on the same page and see what comes up. So I'm gonna put in all of the words Penton oops, and Tietze. And scroll down and hit search. Oh, I've got six hits from that. Let's see what they have to say. So we can click on here again to open up the page, make it bigger, scroll down. And another way to make it bigger is to, to click on the page itself. So now we have a obituary for that Frank that we learned about, that he died at his home in Mahama. We know that he came from German area and immigrated first to Wisconsin and then to Oregon, and has been here ever since. And when we come down here, by golly, look what we have. Mrs. Louisa Penton of Salem, Oregon is listed as one of his daughters. So we know that Frank, is Louise's father, and it's pretty clear that she came with him from Germany, since she was born in 1868, to Wisconsin, to Oregon, and arrived here in 1875. More clues into what her life was like. We also have the names of some other family members that we might see and go back and research some of those, those names as well. 
We can also use clues we know about Louise's life to help us find more and better information. For example, we know that Louise married R.L. Penton in March of 1892. So this time we're going to go and we're going to look really pointedly in the advanced search function for the word Penton. And we're going to limit our search by the year, or by the month, March 301, 1892 to 0331, 1892, and see what shows up. If I were just to search for the word Penton in all time periods, I'd probably get a lot of hits. But this way, we're being really specific for looking at for a situation that happened in there. And in fact, we get two results back. And we click on this first result, and this sometimes will be happen that um, the red highlighted area will not show up on the screen, and you'll have to do a little where's Waldoing to figure it out. So let's take a quick summary and look here, and actually I see it right here right away. Tizi and Penton at the Capital City Restaurant on Wednesday evening, March 2nd, 1892, Louisa Tizi to R.L. Penton justice bachelor officiating the groom is a city bill poster and the bride has been a waitress at the capital city restaurant for two years it's an interesting fun fact that she got married at a restaurant <laughs> um great so even though we started searching for this and it may even with the name we might have a different name here louisa to, to do some searches for louisa instead of louise um Again, sometimes the way these systems are set up, they don't always catch everything. So it's always good to just try as many search parameters as possible. So another way we might want to search to learn more about Louise's life might be to look for more information about the restaurant she worked at, so the Capital City Restaurant. We can use the advanced search function and we can use the with a phrase function to be able to search for the restaurant title itself knowing that the word capital and the word city and the word restaurant are probably going to get a lot of hits because they're really frequently used words. But by choosing the with a phrase, that means that the search is looking for those three words together in that sequence. So let's go ahead and go down and take a search here and see what we might be able to learn about Louise's place of business. Right here. Roll down, and right here we've got Capital City Restaurant. I don't know if you remember from the wedding announcement, but Justice Bachelor was the person that officiated the wedding. He's also apparently the proprietor of the Capital City Restaurant, or the owner of the restaurant. Warm meals at all hours of the day, 24-hour restaurant. And here's another very disturbing, but um, unfortunately part of Salem's past history, statement put out by the restaurant that none but white labor employed in this establishment. During the this time period, there was quite a bit of discrimination against uh, people of color, especially Chinese Americans uh, that were living in the Salem area at the time. And many restaurants and other businesses put this type of advertising in um, in their adver advertisements. They continue with talking about a substantial meal cooked in the first class style and that each meal cost 25 cents. It also gives us a direction for where to be able to find this restaurant on Court Street here in Salem. So we're going to run back up to the home page here. Another way we can get at um, information in the site is to look not necessarily through the search function, but through a browsing function. For example, it might be interesting to know what Louise might have read on an important day uh, in history. For example, what do you think the paper looked like for her uh, when World War I ended? We can go to the calendar function here and use the jump to a year to find 1918 and then scroll down 
here to find November 11th, 1918, which was Armistice Day, the end day for the uh, First World War. And we've got two options. We can look at the Oregon Statesman or the Daily Capital Journal. Both were Salem papers at the time. And you can read along with your relative just what they read when that big event happened for them. Just kind of interesting to see a local perspective on a national or international situation. To be realistic, not all newspapers have been digitized. It might be helpful to know what papers have been digitized so that you know what you might be missing. In the title section here, you can go through and you can actually look at the number of papers and the publication dates that have been digitized here on this website. I prefer to use the location tool and I can kick, click these little arrows so that I can alphabetize where these papers were published at. And for example, for Salem, I can go down to Salem and see, oops, if I get there, <laughs> see what papers and what year rate, year and dates are, are available to me. Um, as you can see, the Capital Journal is in multiple sections here, but there's a pretty good chunk between 1895 and 1919, which may be made up, well, it may be made up here and here, but there are still issues that may not exist. And there's probably papers too that aren't represented here in the digitized materials. The University of Oregon is the newspaper repository for the state of Oregon, and they have um, a really comprehensive list of all newspapers that have been published and put on microfilm here at this um, finding aid here. It's organized the same way by the city that it was published in, and it can give you an idea of other things that may or may not be available. Unfortunately, these aren't necessarily digitized. You actually have to make an old fashioned trip down to the library in Eugene to be able to access most of these on the old fashioned microphone machines. But it's another tool to help you understand what you might not be seeing in your searching as well. Finally, let's take a look real quick at the Chronicling America website here. The interface works very similarly to the Oregon site. Um, they've got an option to do a search term here. We can put in Louise TT and see what comes up. Obviously, the biggest difference is that we're pulling from all states and a lot of different newspapers that might be available. You'll notice that um, many German language papers come up when I do this search here. I don't think any of these are my Louise <laughs> because they're from Cincinnati and Baltimore, and we haven't really seen any evidence that Louise spent time there. But uh, as you can see, this is a German language paper, the old German script. Looks like a Louis instead of a Louise. Probably not our person. But nice to be able to have the opportunity to chain to, to search. They also have an advanced search function that allows you to put in uh, phrases, single words, multiple words. Um, and words within a certain number of words from each other. So just for fun, let's see if anything else shows up if we search a little bit differently here. Nope, no results, but that's okay. Remember, you'll get better search results if you simplify your search. Use what you do know to narrow down what you're looking for. And think creatively about different search terms and ways to get at the information you're after. Thanks for joining us today. Have fun researching, and remember there are worksheets on our website to help you test your newfound skills. See you next time.